Hey everybody, Matt here to discuss some of the changes that have been made in version 2.5.0 of the Torg Eternity system for Foundry. So let's just dive right into that. So you're not going to notice a lot of things that are different about 2.5 on the surface. Most of the user interface is the same. Most of the ways you interact with cards and the combat tracker and things of that nature is the same. But we have made a couple of key changes in terms of the way the skill test system works. Some of those have to do with powers. Some of those have to do with just sort of giving the user a unified experience when they do a skill test, regardless of the nature of the skill test or whether there's a target selected or not. What we want to do is make this as easy as possible for people to be able to learn. And so to do that, one of the things we're doing is just creating a simple uniform process that the user is going to follow regardless of the circumstances. So if you're making an attack with a power, it's going to be very similar to making any other kind of a test instead of dramatically different. We have updated the powers in this a particular version. If you look on the power screen, you're now going to see a few more details. Uh, you're going to see, first of all, that we're going to be able to select with a, from a drop down list the particular skill that's going to be used for a test and the minimum value for that. And then we are actually going to select the difficulty number from a drop down. And this is going to give us all either alternatives of kind of the standard difficulty numbers that range from very easy 6 to near impossible 20 to a variety of different target numbers that are based on a particular statistic on the first selected target that you have. So you're going to need to go through if you have custom powers that you have created that are not a part of our published systems, you're going to need to go through and update the skill names and the difficulty numbers on all of those powers in order to get them to work properly. But now they're going to do a whole lot more for your players and for you as a GM than they did before. We've also added a modifier field for, for power checks. There are a few beta level powers that require you to subtract two or to subtract four, even though it is based, even though the check is based on a target attribute. And so you can actually go in and put a modifier for the power check into the power itself. A lot of the rest of this is the same. You will notice that we now have two boxes, one for apply size and one for apply armor that's specific to power checks. There are some kinds of checks, the rules aren't always clear, but there are some kinds of checks that are made particularly when it comes to psionics, where it's not at all clear that the target size or the target armor ought to apply. So we're going to give you that flexibility to be able to say, don't apply modifiers based on the target size, or don't apply target armor when you're calculating damages. We're going to give you that flexibility when you're setting up a particular power. And the other thing I'd note here is I do have a minus two modifier here on the fireball. That's not the way it's going to show up on our published module. Now, I've just been doing that for demonstration uh, purposes, which we'll get to here in a minute. So let's talk about skill checks now. <clears throat> you, you initiate the skill check in the same way that you have in previous versions. The only difference is that the shift key no longer matters. There is no reason to ever hit the shift key for any kind of a check. And let me just do a, a charisma check here as an example. When I hit the Charisma button here, when I hit the Charisma label, I get a standard dialogue. This dialogue is going to show up with every single test now, regardless of whether you have a target selected, regardless of the circumstances. And you'll see here, I get, a, get to select, once I've decided on my skill test, I can select from any of the standard difficulty numbers for this particular skill test. And I can also add in other modifiers as they might apply, similar to the way I've done in tests in the past. Then I hit the roll button and I get a result over here in the, uh, in the, in the chat. <clears throat> now, if I have a target selected, in this case, I'm gonna select the goon, 
the process is still pretty much the same. I hit the Charisma button, but you will notice a difference. When I go to select difficulty numbers, because I have a target, I'm now going to be able to go down this long list of different kinds of target attributes when I am selecting a, uh, a difficulty number. So if I need to do an opposed check against my target's Charisma, I can do that there. And then you can see I'm now showing an action total of 10 versus a 7 for the target's Charisma, which is a standard success. That's going to apply to any kind of test. I can do the same thing with a find test. If I want to say, let's use um, the target's um, stealth or dexterity as my target for my find test here, I can roll it. And here we go. Action total of 15 versus the target's 8 stealth or dexterity. That gives me a good success. And all of these same options for possibility, up, hero, drama, those are all still there. Now we get to what I think is the most interesting part of the 2.5 update, which is active defenses. Before, there wasn't a lot that happened when you rolled your, for your active defense by clicking on the defenses button. Basically, you just got your bonus generated, and then you would have to remember what that is in subsequent attacks in which you were targeted. But now it works a lot differently. If you click that active defense button, you're still going to get your dialogue here where you can add in modifiers, and then you roll it. Oh, we're going to have a good one here. And so we've got an active defense of plus nine. But look what's happened on my character sheet now. The defenses label is now glowing red and blue, and you'll see that the standard defenses that I can assert in this particular round have all been increased by this bonus number of plus nine. Now, here's what's happening behind the hood. The system has actually generated a temporary effect for your character that you can find over in the effects tab. And we go in and we look at the details on that effect. What we see is that we've added nine to all of these different attributes, dodge, intimidation, maneuver, and so forth. And that is going to stay in place until we hit the defenses button again. And when we hit the defenses button again, they go back to what they normally were. And we get a notification in chat that the character is no longer actively defending. So a really nice bonus for, for uh, Storm Knights who want to actively defend. You don't have to remember what those defense bonuses are anymore. The system's automatically going to calculate those for you. So let's go down to the Attacks and Powers tab now. Notice that we no longer just have an Attacks label here. We've also added Powers here. Now in the Cyber Witch's situation, we only have spells that are added because she doesn't have Miracles or Psionics. But those will also appear in this section of the sheet when you make a roll. Uh, the Attack roll, if you don't have a target selected, is just going to tell you what the damage is. It's going to let you select a difficulty number and it's going to tell you what the damage is like this, like it used to. But then if you do have the target selected, you're going to make the same attack roll. It's going to automatically default to hopefully the particular attribute that you're trying to affect. And then you're going to click your roll button and now it's going to automatically calculate the wounds to the target and uh, as well as tell you what the success is on your test. Identical situation applies now with spells. If you make a spell roll, you're going to, fireball is going to go against target dodge or dexterity in this particular instance, and we'll click the roll button down here. And it's, we failed on this one in particular, so let's try it one more time. There we go. A little bit better success on that one. It rolls an 11 versus the dodge or dexterity, and we can see exactly what damage was applied to the target in that situation. If your test does not involve an attack, such as the diminished spell, we'll click on that one. We do have an option to select target things here if we have a target selected, but in this case, it's just a standard DN. We roll that. 
and we get uh, the success or failure result over in chat. So those are the basic changes that we've made to 2.5. We, I hope what's the result of this is going to be is this is going to make it a whole lot easier for players to understand what's going on, to make their roles a little bit quicker, and just overall to make the game play and game flow move along a little bit more quickly. Now, as always, if you run into bugs or you have problems with it, feel free to look us up on Discord. We'll be happy. we got a whole community of people that will be happy to try to help you with your issues. Thanks so much, and have a great day.